Thank you. Well, let me thank LaToya for all the great work that she does and for that wonderful introduction. And let me also thank the tens of thousands of Americans. In fact, we think perhaps hundreds of thousands of Americans from every state in this country who are joining us this evening. Thank you all. And let me also thank Congressman Keith Ellison for his willingness to serve as chair of the DNC, the Democratic National Committee. And I want to thank the many grassroots organizations consisting of millions of Americans who are actively supporting Keith, including Our Revolution, the CWA, the American Federation of Teachers, the National Nurses United Union, Democracy for America, Working Families Party, Move On, Good Jobs Nation, People's Action, People for Bernie, yeah, <laughs> why not? And Free Speech TV. And I also want to thank the many, many members of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives who are supporting Keith. Some of them are Harry Reid, the current Democratic leader in the United States Senate. The new Democratic leader in the United States Senate, Chuck Schumer, is strongly on board. As are Senators Elizabeth Warren, Martin Heinrich, Tammy Baldwin, Amy Klobuchar, Al Franken, Chris Murphy, and Tammy Duckworth. And I want to thank all of them. And there are many, many, many colleagues of Keith in the House, uh, John Conyers, Maxine Waters, Elijah Cummings, many, many others who are supporting Keith, too many to name, and I want to thank them also. And I also want to thank Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York, who today came on board Keith's campaign. Thank you very much, Mayor de Blasio. And I further want to thank the AFT and President Randy Weingarten for allowing us to use their beautiful facility to live stream uh, throughout the country. Randy, thank you very much. All right, now the thank yous are over. Let's get to the meat of the issue here, all right? You know, you gotta be polite. That's the right thing to do. What we are doing tonight is not sexy, and it's not going to make the headlines in the newspapers all over the country. But it is unprecedented for the Democratic Party and for the long-term future of our country, and it is of enormous consequence. At a time of low voter turnout, at a time, as you all know, when millions of Americans are demoralized politically and are sick and tired of establishment politics and establishment economics, we are gathered here tonight, not only in this building, but all over America, to begin the process of transforming American politics and of creating a government which works for all of the people, not just the 1%. Yeah. That is what we are here to do. And in order to make that happen, our first step is to transform the Democratic Party from a top-down party to a bottom-up party. to create a grassroots organization of the working families of this country, the young people of this country. And I will tell you, having been all over this great nation of ours, the incredible idealism and courage of millions of young people who believe in this country, who love this country, and are prepared to fight to make this country all, in fact, that we can become. And I want to also uh, thank uh, and urge all Americans, regardless of income, regardless of their race, their nationality, their sexual orientation, to jump on into the political process and make the Democratic Party a Democratic Party with a small d, not just a capital D.
This election for chair of the DNC is not a personality contest. The media may think it is, but it is not. From what I can gather, Keith's opponents are decent people who want to improve the Democratic Party and want to see us become victorious. The key difference here and what this election is really about is whether we continue the status quo or whether we bring forth a very different vision for the future of the Democratic Party. That is what this election is about. And here is why we need to go forward in a very, very different direction than currently exists. The painful truth, and it's a truth we have got to recognize and not sweep under the rug. The painful truth is that despite President Obama's strong victories in 2008 and 2012, the Democratic Party has lost enormous political ground over the last eight years. That's just the truth. Running against the most unpopular presidential candidate in history, the Republicans have just won the White House. The Republicans now control the United States Senate. The Republicans now control the U.S. House of Representatives. Republican governors now control almost two-thirds of the state houses in this country. And over the last eight years, Democrats have lost some 900 legislative seats from one end of America to the other. That is the simple, indisputable truth. Clearly, whatever the leadership of the Democratic Party has been doing over the last many years has failed, and we need fundamental change. Unbelievably, and this really is quite unbelievable when you think about it, despite competing against an extreme right-wing party that is so out of touch, so way out of touch with the needs of ordinary Americans, a party, the Republican Party, that advocates cutting Social Security. The American people want to expand Social Security. These guys want to cut it. They want to throw. 20 million Americans off of the health insurance they now have. They want to cut Medicare. They want to cut Medicaid. They want to cut federal aid to education. Despite competing against a Republican Party that in the midst of massive income and wealth inequality, the Republicans want to provide hundreds of billions of dollars to the top 1% despite competing against a political party, which to a very large degree, not only does not want to do anything substantive about climate change, they do not even recognize the scientific reality of climate change. But despite all of that, despite all of that and much more, the Democratic Party has lost significant political ground. And we have got to ask, why that has occurred. Brothers and sisters, the status quo is not working, and we will not succeed if we continue along the same old, same old path. Now is the time for real change in the Democratic Party. Now is the time to revitalize the Democratic Party and bring in people who have not been welcomed in the past, We should not be afraid of new energy and new faces. We should welcome and embrace new energy and new faces. Now is the time for a chair of the Democratic Party who has a very different vision of the party than those who are in control today. Now is the time for Keith Ellison to become chair of the Democratic Party. As I know many of you are aware of,
Keith is currently the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and has been one of the leading progressive voices on all, underlined all, of the major issues facing the middle class and working families of our country. He has been there on picket lines. He's been up front and out front in terms of workers' rights, in terms of the environment and climate change, in terms of the need to create a health care system that guarantees health care to all people as a right. He has been out in front on women's rights, on the rights of the LGBT community, the need for real criminal justice reform, the need for immigration reform, and the need for real tax reform so that Donald Trump and the other billionaires start paying their fair share of taxes. For many, many years, Keith has been there, not as a follower, but as a leader. That's right. Unlike some of the other candidates who are running for chair, Keith knew from day one that the TPP was a disaster for working families and helped us defeat the TPP. <laughs> Keith is, by nature, a grassroots organizer. That is what he does. That is who he is. He is not a creature of the inside the Beltway world. He is a person who lives in the real world, feels comfortable in the real world, and is going to bring the real world into the Democratic Party. As I mentioned when I began, Keith already has the support are some of the strongest grassroots organizations and trade unions in this country, and we have the support of many, many progressive elected officials. Yeah. But we have something even more important than all of that. Yeah. Right now, we have the support of more than 600,000 men and women in every state in this country who have signed petitions to demand and urge that Keith Ellison become the next chair of the Democratic Party. 600,000 people. Our goal, our goal together, and I urge all people who are watching this live stream to get involved in this process, let us take that 600,000 number and make it a million Americans who want Keith as our next chair. Please get your friends and co-workers involved. Please go to OurRevolution.com and get your friends to sign up. Brothers and sisters, we are in a perilous and momentous moment in American history. You all know that. Yeah. And we are going to need a political party that has the guts to stand with working families, has the guts to take on the big money interests who control, to a large degree, our economic and political life. It is my great privilege to introduce to you someone who I believe is going to be the next chair of the Democratic National Committee. Please welcome Congressman Keith Ellison.